The binary search tree is a crucial data structure that will give us the chance to practice writing recursive code. A binary tree is one where each node has 0, 1, or 2 children. As a specialization of the more general tree, a binary tree lets us optimize the representation. Each node need only have two child pointers called left and right. But equally importantly, it allows a new tree traversal strategy. We saw pre- and post-order traversal in the previous video but with binary trees we can also use an in-order traversal. In this traversal strategy, to traverse any node, we first traverse its left subtree recursively, then we visit the node in question, then we traverse the right subtree recursively. This has the effect of visiting all the nodes in the tree, in order, from left to right. A binary tree can be used to represent things like expressions involving unary and binary operators. This covers a lot of ground, as most of the operators that we care about are unary or binary. However, it doesn't quite cover all of the expressions that matter. C, C++, Java, and other languages also implement ternary operators for conditional expression evaluation. It's not pretty, but it's real. Every node in a tree has a depth and a height. The depth is the length of the path from the tree's root to the node. The height is the longest length of the path from the node to a leaf. The height of a tree is the height of its root. You will sometimes also hear this referred to as the depth of the tree. If the heights of each node's subtrees are equal, or at least pretty close, we can call the tree balanced. A balanced tree has the neat property of a logarithmic height. The length of the path from the root to any node in the tree is order log n. This property only holds for balanced trees. It's possible to make trees that are unbalanced to the point of being in the degenerate case, linked lists. Some of the types of trees that we'll look at after the midterm break will impose additional structure on binary trees to ensure that they stay balanced. If we specialize a binary tree by adding an ordering constraint on the nodes, we end up with the ubiquitous binary search tree. In a binary search tree, every node has the property that values smaller than its own are in its left subtree, and values larger than its own are in its right subtree. This means that every subtree within the tree is sorted. This allows us to search for values in the tree faster than linearly. To search for a value within the binary search tree, we start at the root and check to see if the value we're looking for is less than the root node's value. If it is, we recursively search the left subtree. If, on the other hand, the current node's value is less than the one that we're looking for, we recursively search the right subtree. If neither is true, then the current node must contain the value we're looking for, and no further recursion is required. Since the tree is sorted, we never have to look at a subtree that doesn't contain the value we're looking for. There are no false starts, and the maximum number of recursions is equal to the height of the tree, which in a balanced tree is on the order of log n. If we need to look through a tree of a million elements, we would expect to perform just 20 comparisons and recursive descents. Note that this binary search only required that we be able to compare values and ask whether one is less than the other. We don't even need to be able to compare directly for equality. This simplicity of comparison allows us to define all kinds of comparisons. For example, we can compare transcripts based on one course, another course, or even a number of courses together. In fact, a useful exercise would be to create a binary search tree that uses a non-trivial comparison function, such as one that compares a particular field within two objects. Finding the minimum or maximum value in a binary search tree is fairly trivial. Just keep following left or right pointers until you reach the end. Insertion is a more interesting operation, but not terribly complex, if you think recursively. Starting at the root of the tree, we compare the new value to the current node's value. If it's less than the node's value, we need to insert on the left, keeping in mind that adding to an empty tree is a matter of creating a new node and setting the subtree's root to point at it. If the current node's value is less than the new value, we need to insert on the right. If neither is true, the new value is equal to the current value, and we can increment a counter in the node, add the new value to a linked list hung off the node, or, in some cases, simply ignore the new value. In a balanced tree, again, insertion should take logarithmic time, although the insertion may cause the tree to become less balanced. That's all we'll talk about for now. After the break, we'll look at how to remove elements from a binary search tree, and then we'll talk about more specialized trees such as AVL trees, which work to keep the whole tree balanced to preserve logarithmic search times.